Hey guys, I'm here with my Kubota BX25D tractor. It's got the back hill on it. And today I'm going to show you a, a little tip on how to build a trailer hitch, put a trailer hitch on without taking off your backhoe that you can tow your trailer without the backhoe removal and it works great. Uh, what happened was a while back, I got on YouTube and started looking around. I found a gentleman that made a hitch for his. And what he did was he made a hitch that actually replaced the bucket, which two reasons. He, he, even, he even stressed this in his video that it's kind of a pain to put it on there. But when you do that and you're pulling a trailer, even a smaller trailer, you're putting a lot of stress on your hydraulic system because of the starting and stopping all the time. And it can really, really mess up your hydraulic system. And I, I stood and I looked at mine for a while. And after a bit it came to mind, I thought, you know, I'm going to try something. And it, it has really been working great for me. But what I did was, if you go into Tractor Supply to get them, you, you can find them in there. They have one and a quarter and two inch receivers that you can build your own trailer hitch if you have a say a vehicle that they don't make one for a tractor or something you can buy these receivers they're relatively cheap but uh, they're around 25 dollars i believe but i went into tractor supply and i got myself a one and a quarter inch one and uh, it's painted now but it, it comes in just regular steel and what i did was i took it over to the weld shop my welders broke down but i took it to the weld shop at the time and uh, I had them welded on here. As you can see, it's on the lower boom. It's down low. But you got to remember, when you weld it on, to keep the hole up. You can't put the hole down because you'll be defeating your purpose. So you got to keep the hole up. Then when you take your trailer ball, hits your one and a quarter inch, you have to drill a hole down through the top. But what happens now, by putting this down here, all your pressure is down here is on this big pin, and the whole system is one solid system going into your subframe. So you're putting all the pressure down here and not up here on your hydraulic system where you could end up really, really messing things up. And if you start bending that stuff, you're getting into some pretty big bucks. So you don't want to be doing that. You, you don't want to take the risk, especially if you're going to be pulling a little bit bigger trailer. When I say pulling a trailer, I recommend you know, maybe four or five foot wide by six, eight feet long. And if you're pulling an eight foot trailer, I don't mean a, a big heavy steel one either. I'm talking maybe one of the lighter trailers like tractor supply cells or Lowe's, but I still would not load it down heavy. And what I did was I have a trailer. I'll show you this real quick that I bought at Harbor Freight for $259. And what I did was I made the tongue 18 inches longer. I, it doesn't have the original tongue that it came with. The reason for that is that I don't I, I don't like it's I don't like to pull a trailer behind a car. I do pull this trailer behind the car also, and I don't like to not be able to see a little bit of the trailer at least. I like to be able to see at least some of the trailer when I'm pulling it. Plus, a little bit longer tongue makes a big difference in back of a trailer. When they're a longer tongue like that, they're a lot easier to back. But what happened was by doing that, it turned out to be a third good thing because now it'll clear my bucket but here let me show you if i put this in here like this i'm not going to put the pin in and i'll just slide it in you get the picture and now you got your trailer hitch in there and you're ready to pull a trailer once you put your pin in but you still have to keep your bucket up a little bit to kind of clear the tongue now one thing you can do if you want to avoid that and don't want to do that was you could make your own trailer ball hitch that's a two and a half inch drop but if you would go and make one with about five inches of drop i believe it would probably clear the tongue but you would have to actually try it first i'll put your trailer on there and see to make sure and see exactly how much you need i'm sorry about the traffic folks but it's it's busy today on this road and but normally it isn't i don't see a car but maybe once every two days anyway let's get back to subject if, if i walk behind my tractor hunker down here and show you you'll see it's off center because it's welded to the one side okay but it's it's off center by about i would say four inches five inches doesn't mean anything when you're pulling a trailer and the reason the the reason i put it off center to the left a little bit is because you could you could even weld it to the other side if you wanted but the reason i did this is to try to avoid the i wanted to keep it on this side to avoid this and i don't think it would hit it i didn't try it but i i, 
I just didn't want a full round over here. Plus, if you're pulling a trailer, I don't want it over this way where it goes into a ditch or something when I'm on the road. So I just kept it over here toward this side over here. And it has absolutely no bearing on your backhoe whatsoever. You will not hit it on your on your tractor anywhere. You won't hit it on the ground anywhere. I actually even use my backhoe with the trailer ball still in, and it doesn't seem to affect it at all. It's nowhere near hitting anything. So I made sure of that long before I did it. But uh, like I say, you still have to keep the keep your bucket up in the air a little bit, and make sure your tongue's long enough that uh, you can clear that. But the tongue of mine, the trailer's probably another foot past the bucket so has plenty of swing clearance i've been using it for a while now and it works just great but uh one more thing actually two just don't forget to keep that hole up when you weld it but here's the, here's another thing you gotta watch this bolt right here when i got my tractor the nut was on the bottom now if that ever needed replaced you wouldn't have enough room to pull that bolt out of there so before I welded on, I spun the bolt around and put the nut at the top. And now, if that bolt ever needs replaced, it's no problem. But uh, this has absolutely no bearing on your backhoe whatsoever. It will not hit anywhere on the tractor. And I put it approximately, it's about, uh, that would be from the bottom of the hole down to there's about an inch and a half. And I uh, put a level on there and the boy, the, the young man welded it for me. He did a great job. And man, I'll tell you, it really works great. I'd never have to remove my backhoe. Uh, I have another trailer I pull. It's a little five foot by six foot, and it works great with two. But like I, I said, it it has a longer tongue on it also. I always put a little bit longer tongue on the trailers when I buy them because I just, I, like I said before, I like to be able to see my trailer behind me, at least a little bit of it. It really makes me feel a little more secure whenever I can see everything's okay back there. But anyway give it a try and if you you're like me one of these guys that don't like to take his backhoe off all the time because you got got to pull a trailer there's a remedy for it and you could go with a two inch uh, receiver if you wanted to that's that's you know that's that's anybody's choice whatever they want to do but i would i've never checked with a two inch receiver just make sure before you actually weld it on there that the thing is gonna work but i, I guarantee the one and a quarter works like a champ so uh Anyway, thanks for watching.